So Chico is going to look at every single room and uh, she is looking for two things. Number one, things that might remind her of her own past. Number two, papers and documents of any kind, but especially the uh, diary type. If there is any room that a completely crazy mind might call library, also please tell me. I do want to go back to 12 again to see if uh, 11 as well, predominantly 12, to go through the documents which already didn't go through. You go to 12 as Sachiko is making her way to 1. And in general, with the previous things I already saw on the CCTV, I also want to see if I can find anything related to those. Or, you know, investigate where I could go next to learn more about that. You feel like, ah, the office should be a good place to explore. Because there is footage of every room before the before you see the father start to take off all the cameras, you can kind of develop an image as to what each room is. Can I look at the cameras and examine them and possibly uh, take them apart? You could pick them apart, but you think you're taking apart actual functioning cameras that could be connected to something and use these cameras. You think you don't have the expertise to put them back together in the same way they were. Can I just take apart one of them for a different, creating like a little toolbox of parts that I can use at my disposal? Sure. They are the number of the rooms. Now you've taken, uh, taken off one of them. Mm -hmm. The next one you check is the bathroom, Sachiko. There's obviously the corpse, the mutated corpse there. Markings on the wall as if it's been punched. A slightly broken mirror. Uh, forensic abilities on the mirror and the punches on the wall to see if I can find anything. Also, if I see a Sharpie, please tell me too. And also to the cinder who's following me, I say, uh, I'm pretty certain that if we want to uh, defeat the daughter monster, we need to find a library. I think the uh, library is up on the first floor. That's where she got the one book. Okay, we need to find it. We need to find it. I think the secret to defeating her is somewhere there. You understand from the forensic analysis of the wall, it has uh, a direct connection to uh, fucked up knuckles of the father corpse that you found. You could guess that that was the same person who also broke the mirror. You also find a connection between the same blood and who it could have been who locked the doors again to this place for the first time. So that the children wouldn't see the corpse of their mother. Cinder is going to be looking for any more places where there could be a safe or any more locations of weapon caches. And Noel? Um, I want to get off the, uh, the floor. And we're not so strictly going anywhere, just sort of pacing around the room. See how much stress my body can take at the minute from moving quickly or resistance pushing up against things. You, you think that you could probably have a bit more stamina doing physical activities if you keep the same rhythm on this drug. And otherwise, you just feel it slowly coming off now. So I'm just going to look at Cinder and say, this shit is pretty fucked up. Hey, actually, that'd make a pretty good name. And I've decided it shall be called PFU. Uh, that's great. And so you've made your very first drug of the campaign. Keep in mind, Artemis, you could name your weapons as well if you wanna. Uh, yeah, I'll name them later when I completely make them and stuff. For now, I'm just gathering lots of little tools and delicate things. You now go into the office. Um, general look around, but I am doing it with the focus of finding out what happened with the CCTV. You actually think you find the note when you're looking around under the table that previously wasn't discovered. Ooh, I shall read it. I do not dare put away a part of father in the forget room. It is, however, the part of him that marks his absence, and neither one of us is interested in it anymore, as a family. Since you are forgotten, you can have his absence. I will flush it all down to your greedy mouth. Interesting. From where it is, you 
think it's kind of strange that it did land where it did. You think this isn't something that belongs in this room? Yeah, I was about to ask, when you said it, was it under the desk? You can perfectly imagine how this one piece of paper probably came down and collected the same type of blood from the boiler room and also then was repositioned and pushed down something along the lines of another uh, elevator and from what you can make of it, it probably just wedged out from the side of the office, room 11, that connects to the storage. Hmm. Can I examine that? You think there might be a secret door there that connects the office to the storage with something in between. Want some help? Then yeah, boy! <laughs> <laughs> you pull off the door and see this elevator. Underneath, you see this broken shell of a shotgun. It's, it's very badly damaged, but you, Cinder, think you can definitely put it together. This is more of an antique, if you think. And if you were to investigate the elevator further, you think there seems to be some resembling weapon types of items stuck up there. So whatever this leads to on the floor above in the basement, you know, might, might tingle your weapon interest. Dope. Can I do a thorough search just around all of the room and the items and everything? Other than finding the documents, do you see lots of different pictures, mostly of the family? One of them strangely tilted. You actually know that on the precision station, there are items that Norman was working on. There are child socks on the ground and they seem to be stretched beyond what a child's foot could do. To the right, when you check the PC and the desk and the blanket, it seems like in a very strange way, the screen has been paid for extra to be kept up with an arm so that it's kept hovering over the table while there is more than enough room for it to be on the table. <laughs> Noel? You're feeling a little downed right now. You feel like you missed the dopamine. Otherwise, you're all fine. It doesn't seem to be that hard to come off of. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a minute to have some food because um, I didn't eat earlier when I was tripping bulls. Yeah, in fact, Cinder is sitting there with food, just kind of staring at you. And just take a moment to appreciate some of the, some of the dopamine I get from eating. While he is eating, Cinder will be. Going through uh, the rest of the area in there, but she is going to, to do a more thorough investigation. Up, there is the cleaning station, a delicate elevator, backpack stuck up there where you can't reach. Otherwise, there is a smell of alcohol that comes from this elevator specifically. Down, there are power tools. Left, there is a DIY toolbox trolley. There is a medical station. Right, you see the MRE maker. There are the replacements for lots of the technological items that you've seen so far in the shelter. And still the emergency gas masks and everything. Uh, with the um, DIY area, can I find anything that would allow me to get towards that backpack? You think you can definitely get yourself a physical extendable pointer to poke at it, but you don't think it necessarily like, it's not something that makes you feel like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get items out of this by doing this. Still, you could try it. Let's go for it. You poke at it. You hear first a low voice in a sing-songy way saying something. And then afterwards, you hear footsteps audible through the elevator part. <laughs> as if something was opened, as if that thing was closed, and then again goes away. Uh, does the quickness of the steps remind me of the daughter upstairs? Yes, it's exactly the same. Okay. Sachiko, you have just finished exploring the playroom, which is number three. You're now at the dining and living area, which is number four and number 14. So an overview, please. There is a note on the table. Otherwise, there is that grand dining table. There are lots of other items on the table as well. I just told you about what immediately catches your eye. And there is also a little area to the side that allows access to more structural interfaces that have to do with the shelter. Mm. That's just for the dining place. 
so the table is not a hologram. If the hologram system was to turn off, they would leave behind just technological husks that don't have any artistic value to them. Uh, so Chico, do you want me to check the living room or you want me to stay with you? So uh, my suggestion is that you check the other items on the table while I'm reading the note. Done. Cinder, immediately you discover something. Containers, very small containers. You think it's for quick death, easy death, poison. Oh. You just know that there's one missing if you were to count the family. However, there had been a grand feast. You think mostly the luxurious items from the fridge? Mm -hmm. Whisper this information to Chico. The Chico receives the information and reads the note on the table. The gist of it, even though it goes on for a very long time, is that this is death with dignity. If you do find us in the situation, this unfortunate situation, do not mention it and then reveal some legal rights saying that you cannot re uh, release this to the public and also kindly asks of you to use the digital copies of the family in the mainframe system to revive them at a better time. So first, Sechiko makes a comment. She says, the motherfuckers are threatening to sue us from beyond the grave. What? And I give her a summary of what I read. And then, is it handwritten? Yes. Is there any way that I can tell how old it is? Actually much newer than the corpse in the bathtub. Much newer than even the people in the, in the playroom. There's just another generation of the family. And what you said to Cinder was that only one of the poisons was missing, yes? Yes. Uh, just as a as an arrow in the dark, does my knowledge of criminal elements help me with understanding anything about this? You think you remember this handwriting in some of the contracts, so you think whoever wrote this was in charge of criminal activity that you then had to clean up. Oh, holy shit, so... Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna use the plotter's daughter. You know that he was one of the prime targets that you were told that you would be investigating, but other than that, not anything specific. Right, okay. Artemis, your turn again. I want to look more closely at the screen hovering over the table. You think that the arm that's holding it up is neither fitting with the technological theme of everything else around, nor as flexible or as efficient as anything else you've seen Norman prefer? I see. Interesting. So does it have, does the table have any drawers or anything? Yeah, it has lots and lots of different drawers you can... Just a scavenger. Yeah. You immediately find out that the top part of the table it would rotate and give way to hidden content underneath it. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> Inside it, what looks like little pins, almost the size of batteries, just small 9-volt batteries, and there is a map. There are more legal papers other than the documents you found. There are a couple of names written down on a paper as well. You think the previous documents that you were looking for and you found were probably a quick review of some of these ones and then the ones that you found were thrown out. I'll start from the thrown out ones, I guess. All right, the thrown out ones were the ones you previously had found. There's just maps for the rooms. There is a printout of what you can guess to be hack attempts on the computer. There are also some legal documents that show some sort of legal battle that the Traumans had with the company that would be making the pods. So that's what the initial documents hold. All right. And what were the other documents? Hey, Artemis. I kind of feel uh, useless in here. Show me what to look at and I will. I'll just point in the distance towards the um, pictures, the tilted pictures. Take a look over there. Looks sort of odd. Take a close look. Gotcha. You start to look at the pictures. The tilt that one of them has kind of makes you think these were handled a couple of times. They were taken off and put back on. And they were probably put back on in a rush last time or maybe carelessly. That's why one of them is tilted. If you were to inspect it even closer, you would notice that one of the pictures inside the frame is tilted. 
as if the frame itself is standing still, but the picture itself is slightly tilted behind the glass. The corners kind of have this warped effect, as if the picture that you're seeing is magnified into being the picture that it is. I will start taking them off one by one. You take them off, they, they feel a little heavier than you would expect most picture frames of that size to feel. They seem a little bit thicker again than you expected as well from picture frames. Uh, how easy is it to get into the back of them? You can start looking and you think it's just covered by a little bit of what looks, looks to be cloth. And if you were to take that off, you think you actually can see a similar thing to the number of pins that were on the table. You can see a number of those and an entry for it. Cinder's uh, going to take out the pins of one. Instantly, the put... picture just goes out and there's nothing in the yeah. frame anymore. No? Start moving towards uh, 12. You find yourself in what very obviously seems to you to be the security room. Right, can I have a look at the um, room safety reports? You can kind of deduce hack attempts that have been done on the system and also find which number of rooms are safe. You now have all the maps of all the floors laid out in front of you. And even just with your expertise, you can even guess what each is for. Right, so it's just, it's maps. It's not uh, like security footage or cameras. You do have the software maneuverability and you could just try to go to that part through this device as well. What do you want to check for? I can see all the floors, yeah, even the ones above us. Uh, oh. Yeah, but those ones don't seem to have any, you know, this, this system doesn't seem to have any access to any cameras up there, if there are any. Um, through the safety report, am I able to tell if there's any sign of life in the floors above us? All the floors have been breached and they are unsafe, except for one part. You think the only part that might be safe is actually the pool section. Am I able to see like what the, uh, the safest route would be for there? The safest way to the pool would be first finding somehow a way to open it up and then otherwise pop out of nine, find your way to seven and then sneak either through six or from seven into the pool area. I want to see how the systems are damaged and if there's anything I can do. They seem to be to have been damaged with power tools. You think that it was a specific type of kinetically modified axe. All of these devices, they've been broken down by someone. I want to see if I can access the old footage before when everything was normal. You see everyone, the entirety of the family coming down, mostly very happy. If you want to ask any questions about how each of their behaviors are, I can tell you that as well. But otherwise, you find out where each person's room is. And if you were to fast forward, go back up. Another time they come down and this repeats again, like four or five times. Most of the time, four out of five, there seems to be another person with them that you think is their butler. Right, can I focus? Can I focus on the butler and just see if I can gather any information? The relationship between them and the parents specifically. Norman seems very fond of him, while the butler seems very, 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 very polite. Very friendly, but very polite all the time. And you even see Norman, you know, tease him about it. And the mother? You don't have much insight, so I can't really even roll a dice for you. But you think there are some slight hints of self-harm and also there are hints of her being an insomniac the mother seems to interact with the butler as well but a lot of the time it seems to be the butler comforting her about her obsession with cleanliness so she seems very obsessed with it and you see her even scolding the children very often about it while he is doing this, Cinder's yeah. just going to get a pile of... You know what? She's just going to do a thorough look at the room to find parts that could maybe help him fix shit. You were the Cinder from the storage room. You remember seeing lots and lots of replacement parts. I'll go ahead and start gathering that stuff for him. Sachiko. She looks at Cinder and says, so there are two other cinders who are in other places and are having completely different experiences right now. Am I correct? 
Yeah, you're right. I mean... So, already, there are three different sets of experiences for Cinder. So, the Cinder who came to the apocalyptic world with me is already gone because she had one singular set of experiences. Now, there are three different people who are similar to the Cinder I knew, but none of them are exactly the Cinder I knew. I'm still me. I still love you. I'm... Yeah, but who is the Cinder between the three of you? Me. Why? I'm with you, aren't I? This is the most disturbing thing to think about in this shithole event. More disturbing than the monsters. 